We talked about the three states. In psychological terms, we can call them the unconscious mind, the kind of conscious mind, the subconscious mind that seems to be thinking just before the conscious mind, the emotional brain. And then there seems to be a fourth state, a superconscious, pre-conscious mind that observes, that watches, that sits in you and knows exactly what to do, but we don't listen to it too much. That's the one we have to train and listen to, because that's your divine self. Turiya state. So all Durga is doing is helping you with the other three states, your three types of ego. Tamasic, Rajasic and Satvic, the three worlds we live in. So negative forces inside and out are called the Asuras. So Durga comes to destroy nine Asuras that live in your three worlds, your three parts of your being, which are also governed by three energies, Kali, Lakshmi and Saraswati, Mahalakshmi, Mahakali, Maha Saraswati. And when you look at them, the lower part of your body, the reptilian brain, is what determines your tamasic nature, your you know, ignorance, your positive side of it is that it gives you strength, it makes you stronger like an elephant and an ox and protective, innocent. But the negative is slothfulness, lethargy, attachment, rigidity, heaviness, impotence, not being able to do anything, not to be able to try anything. And then when you come to the fire part of you and you become heart, you can go rajasic, which is action, creativity, success, power, strength comes into you. But the negative side is you can get arrogant and controlling and egotistical, willpower, anger, anxiety comes. And then the third part is the sattvic part of you, which the positive is the, the spiritual nature, tranquility, harmony, beauty, calm, satisfaction, stillness. But the negative is arrogance, superiority, judgment, disgust not being able to deal with the world, excessive detachment. Think about that. Even the highest positive state of sattvic has ego to it. So what do we do? We light a fire in our belly, like we just did. Chandi, Chamundaya, the inner fire. Now the great battle around, this was compiled into a great you know, the Chandi part or called the Devi Mahatma. So when you look at the great history of Indian wisdom, you always hear of the Bhagavad Gita, the Rig Vedas, the Upanishads. But one of the most important psychological manuals, which includes Shakti and the story of Shakti, is called the Chandi part or the Devi Mahatmya. And this was written as a compilation around the sixth century, even though the stories were told for thousands, hundreds of years before. And it was the story of Durga, Chandi, who comes to solve the problem of three worlds your tamasic world, your rajasic world, and your sattvic world. So it was really a psychological manual in the form of a spiritual treatise to invoke the goddess. And if you read that, and you know, I'll try and post a PDF of a version of it, every goddess you can imagine is mentioned there. The Kalis, the Chamundayas, the Lakshmis, the Saraswatis, the Durgas, they're all, this is where they get their first appearance in a grand opera. And so it is a great opera that they wrote back in the day. And basically, over nine days, the Asuras have taken over the world, the demons have taken over the world. The demons, your, all your ego. And for nine days, Durga comes. And Durga is an amalgamation of many, many things. And we'll look at that in a second. 
So Durga is put together once a year and for nine days she comes and cleans you up and fixes your ego and puts you back into flow. So it was a nine days of catharsis and flow to get back to flow in life. So every year in October, around then, nine days of the moon, there's this great thing of Durga Puja, Chandi Puja. And that puja is celebrated in Bengal and Nepal, all over India. And of course, now it's ritual, but the meaning is the nine demons of my ego that I'm going to destroy. You know? So, when you look at the nine demons, we need to understand them a little bit because they are your ego, right? They are your ego. So I'm going to show you some of these things a little bit. Here's a great painting from around the 10th century that shows the great battle of Durga. There she is riding different animals, each one of her nine forms. She brings her nine versions of herself or her and the eight matris come and they form different powers. And, you know, you'll see some recognizable ones. There's Vara here on the left with the, the sow face. Chamundaya is there somewhere. Everybody's there. They're all here. And they come and they do battle with the Asuric nature of everything in you. And they clean up your chakras and they clean up your system. And then they, off they go. This is the Chandi part. So the story begins with two men, Surat and Samadhi. Surat is a king who has been thrown out of his kingdom, yet longs to go back to his family. And, some, and Samadhi is a trader who has lost his business and been thrown out of the town. And they're both wandering the forest with nowhere to go, but they're longing for the illusion of their lives they once had. And they meet this wise sage called Sumedha. And they ask him, why do we miss everything so much? Why do we cling to the material world we came from? Why do we long for our families, even though they booted us out and hate us so much? Why do we do this? And he says one word. He says that you, it's Mahamaya, the great delusion of living in the womb of the mother. As long as we live in the world, we're in that delusion that we come into being, we pass time clinging to life and then we end. And everything in the visible universe has to go through these three states. Ichagyana, Laya, birth, continuity, dissolution. And he says that the, he talks about the great mother that we are from and how Durga became an amalgamation of Mahasaraswati, Mahalakshmi, and Mahakali to form to, together to get Chandi. So when we say, I'm Hrim Klim Chamundaya Viche, what we are saying is Mahasaraswati, Mahalakshmi, here she's Hrim, and Klim, Mahakali come together into one as Chamundaya in my belly and destroy my negative asuric tendencies. Knowledge of consciousness, destroyer of arrogance, destroyer of illusions. Everything should be removed. This is the teaching. So, the at the beginning of the day, we Mahatmya, this is what Guruji Amitananda was chanting earlier, is this beautiful first verse where they chant and they say ya chandi madhu kaita bhadi daitya dalani ya mahisha shonolini ya dhumekshana chanda munda madni ya rakta bija ashani shakti sumbha nisumbha daitya dalini dalini ya siddhi datri para sa devi navakoti murti sahita Sahita Ma Patu Visheshwari. And they normally sing it, but I won't sing. But it says basically, Chandi, slayer of the demons Madhu and Kaitaba, destroyer of Mahish Asura, executor of Chanda and Munda at dusk, annihilator of Rakta Bija, destroyer of Sumba and Nisumba, 
Oh, goddess who gives powers and success. Oh, Devi and your nine avatars, we bow to you because you are the ruler of the universe. So these are the nine demons we are going to do battle with, the nine egos that are given a form of demons that we're going to talk about. And when we look at the next slide, you'll see that Durga is also given attributes, not only of, in the story, in the Devi Mahatmya, all the gods go to her because the gods can't destroy these asuras. They need Shakti, Aditi to come, Adi Shakti to come as Durga. The goddess has to come. And if she comes, each god has to give a gift to her of a power that she can use to destroy in this 10 days or nine days. So Lord Shiva gives her the Trishul, the three-pointed spear, to destroy the three gunas, Tamas, Rajas, and Sattva. Wisdom. Conch, she blows the sound from which the entire creation emerges. Lord Varuna gives her that. So different gods of the Vedas give up power. So basically, they are subservient to the goddess. The gods have no power in the, the world of men and women. She's given the discus by Vishnu because she is the center of creation, can destroy and give birth to everything. He gives us the lotus because that's Mahalakshmi, because it can awaken consciousness in you, in your heart, and you will understand truth. Brahma gives it to her. She gives her the sword. Time is the cutter, an intelligence required to cut, to use the discrimination to overcome your negativity. Everything is in the illusion of time. The bow and arrow are symbols of wind and sun. The mace is the, you remember Bagla Mukhi? The mace to bang you, to stop you from being distracted so you can meditate on Madurga, devotion. Thunderbolt shatters the problems encountered in life without losing confidence. That's to strike the Kundalini awake. And snake, Kundalini must wake up in you. And the axe and armor are given to you to not fear anything, to go fearlessly into everything. So she's given all these symbols, right? And what's really nice about the symbols is that she comes in two forms. She comes in the form of the Durga or Ambika, the loving mother who's protecting you. So she is beautiful and graceful and loving. And she comes as the fierce Kali, Chamundaya, who is the, the tongue out garland of heads, you know, cutting off heads, sticking the tongue and bleeding everywhere, this fierce goddess of the thing. So this is both the sun and the moon. She's both the full moon and the new moon. She is, both mothers are in one in your belly. So when you think of one, you cannot have one without the other. You must have Durga, Chandi and Chamudaya. You must have Kali and you must have Durga, light. Lakshmi and Kali. This is the duality that the mother is both the nurturer and the destroyer. Isn't that beautiful? So the, the story goes that they're, they're basically nine demons she has to do battle with. And I'll quickly take you through them. It's very important to understand this because there's Tamasic, two in the Tamas, Madhu and Kaitap. Then there's Mahish Asura in the Rajasic, which is the, the Manipura and the heart. And then there's the mind. How do we overcome all the arrogance of the mind? So we go through each one of these. And you can look at this later. How do you overcome tamashic karma? So the first two demons are Madhu and Kaitaba. Right? And Madhu means honey. And Kaitaba means the fly that floats around honey. So when you think of Madhu, it's a sticky, gooey thing that once you get addicted to it, it's very difficult to get out of it. You're kind of 
you become, you know, it's like sitting on your couch during COVID and watching Netflix and eating junk food and just sitting there, doing nothing else but binging. Honey is like that. So the concept here is that the nature of a scared or person who is scared of life is to withdraw and cocoon and sit and do nothing, feel impotent, to feel like you're stuck in honey, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, licking honey all the time. And the other side of it, the other demonic nature in that, is that you're also like a fly looking for new honey or new things to, new video games to play, new stuff to do, new ways to pass time, new bad conspiracy theories to read, new things to do. All that stuff's happening to you because you're in fear. So you are flitting around trying to occupy your mind to stop you from rising up. This is very beautiful metaphor of the first two, because that's what the tamasic nature is like, to sit doing nothing. 